What's up, everybody? Once again, it's Brand Man Sean, and this video is brought to you by BrandManNetwork.com because I signed myself. Now, this is a snippet from an interview with an artist by the name of Jay Kane. He's been doing a lot of things, finding success for himself in the digital space, but he actually had a hit in his own right some years ago that he had zero benefits from. Zero benefits from, and I'm gonna let him tell you why. Yeah, that was my question. I was gonna say, have you ever felt pressure to really get into that other bag of melodies and different types of beats? Oh yeah, I have that. I have all of that. Me and Kato, we have a, we have a couple wrecks together where I'm actually not on that vibe. Like we have a record we done years ago when he was with Funk Volume uh, called yeah. Make Fine. And uh, the record was big actually. It got big on me and it left me. You ever, like I had a record leave me. I had a record that was playing overseas and like doing big numbers on the radio and I had no rights, no, no <laughs> I had no rights to it. I had no, no, um, no publishing. I had nothing to collect the royalties or anything. And the wow. record was so big. And, and, and when I came and done the record on the stage, like I had a show and uh, somebody called me out and they wanted me to do a show. And, and I came and, you know, and I played Maker Mine. I did the song Maker Mine. And they was like, that's you? And I'm like, yeah, that's me. You know, Streets 945, that's what it was. Streets 945 was like, where were you? Mm. And I'm like, where was I? And it was like, yeah, man, this record been playing over a year on the radio station. Wow. Where have you been? I was like, I didn't know that. Sheesh. But yeah, but <laughs> yeah, the Maker Mine record. But since so then, how does that happen? How does that happen? Well, I noticed that it had a hundred thousand plays on on uh, SoundCloud, mm -hmm. but I didn't have the pro, so I didn't know where it was getting played. I didn't even know how to read the analytics or how to prepare tours and shows in different cities. Once you find out where mostly the fan base is or even how to get it to radio or how radio would pick it up or how they would track the numbers or anything or media base or sound exchange. I didn't know nothing about that. I just knew about doing music and putting it on SoundCloud and that was it. That's all I knew about. But I had it for download on SoundCloud. Oh man. <laughs> and, and so yeah, when I went there, I had over 50,000 downloads for the song. But let me remind you, I'm more of the Eminem rappy type guy. I didn't really care for the record. Uh, so, you get what I'm saying? I just put it up. I saw it was getting plays. I saw I had 50,000 downloads, but I just was like, oh, people like it. Okay, whatever. You know, I yeah. didn't care about it. You know, yeah. but when, when I did the show, they said, man, where were you? Do you have your copyrights? Do you have the things that you need for this song to be, you know, to make you money? And I said, no. And so that's when they started sending me things like go to CSAC and here, go. And then that's when they started sending me things. Yeah, like, <laughs> so it was like, it was so crazy. I was like, yo, I didn't know this. I could have made so much money, but I had no idea. I had no idea about it. I'm, excuse me, I'm grilling. All right, as always, you'll be able to find the full interview at the link in the description. Once that interview becomes active, I'm gonna be dropping it in a few days. But I would love to know you guys' perspective on this because we always hear about the fact that yes, you should have all your legal things in order. You need to educate yourself on these things. But it's interesting to hear about it from the standpoint of somebody who didn't get screwed. He did not get screwed. No one did him wrong necessarily. They just didn't know how to even find the guy, right? He didn't even know what was happening with the success of his track. He had just had no idea. So not having access to the information, not even knowing what was going on, and then kind of being dismissive anyway, where it's already not something that you care as much about, it just created this interesting situation. I would love to know, first of all, if there's any of y'all in the comments that have a similar scenario, 
put that in the comment section below because I think it's gonna help other people. But other than that, this isn't just a reminder to sign up with organizations like CSAC and BNI and all that good stuff, but it's also just a reminder that you should be tracking the success of your songs. You have to figure out a way to centralize it or do the best you can. A lot of these platforms make it a lot easier these days and you know, just having the knowledge you're more likely to do it these days, but especially when you're offering something like downloads. If you see a lot of downloads, you have to figure out how do I look into this? Because when you think about his situation, right? Once people download it, now you have no idea what they're doing with it. I could be the top DJ in my city somewhere across the world and have a huge following and playing this thing that I downloaded, you no longer have any kind of data, anything to track from it. So just keep that stuff in mind. This video, the full interview is definitely something dope and worth checking it out. Again, this video is brought to you by brandmannetwork.com. And if you like this video, go ahead and like button. If you like it, you might as well share it. And if you're not subscribed, you know what to do. Hit that subscribe.